And we're live. Welcome once again to HeroQuest fans. So I've had a little bit of a crazy schedule lately. I'm just thinking with the winter months approaching, you may get some irregular uh, streams. Just going to warn you ahead of time. Um, my time's in big demand. Everybody wants to hang out with me. Not saying I'm Mr. Popular or whatever, but it just it just happens. It's a good time to get, to get together with friends and family. So I do want to prioritize that, even though I love uh, hanging out with all of you. So, Saturdays are still going to be kind of the carve-out time. If I can't do a Saturday to stream, I'm going to try to do a Friday. If I can't do a Friday, I'm going to try to do a Thursday. If I can't do a Thursday, probably do a Tuesday. But I'm still going to try to stream weekly if I can. But you will see the uh, schedule on twitch.tv slash HeroQuestFans. And I try to do HeroQuest-related content, but on Fridays and other off days, I'll try to do other stuff. It being the spirit of Halloween right now, um, we've got my little uh, crystal skull uh, thing there. Uh, this is not vodka. This is just like a pirate cup, basically. A little black light for for mood lighting. And the uh, royalty music you're listening to is Carl Casey, White Bat Audio. Shout out to him, and shout out to the Strange Bus for turning me on to his music. He's got a lot of really cool um, royalty-free stuff. So check him out on YouTube. And uh, thank you, big thank you to all the people who have supported us in our first year and going into our second here on Twitch and also continuing on YouTube. Uh, people who have subscribed, who have followed, uh, who have gifted subs, who have interacted. I've really enjoyed interacting with all of you and I hope it's provided a little bit of entertainment, a little bit of laughs, a little bit of smiles uh, for whatever else you're doing in your life. Try to focus on the positives. Then we've also got the Rantcast, where we can kind of let out our aggression toward the entertainment industry and how it kind of uh, messes around with the things that we like, but also giving credit where credit is due, shouting out the things that are good that we notice. So anyway, that's what that's all about. So I think what we're going to do today is we're going to read some game books. I'm just going to lower this audio just a little bit more. And we're going to continue on. So I think the first thing we're going to do is Vampire Spies and Alien Beings by R.G. Austin. Which Way Books. And I really like this book. If I had one criticism of it is that it's really, really short. I mean, it feels like you read three or four paragraphs and then boom, you got a choice. So it's obviously aimed at a younger demographic, but when I was that age, a certain age, it was the greatest. Because it really got your imagination going, and you just kept reading, trying to find all the endings, trying to get through it. So let's begin. For those of you who missed us last time. And no rank cast uh, this weekend, obviously. But next week, we're uh, looking into it. Congratulations! You've won the Grin Toothpaste Sweepstakes. Your prize is an all-expense-paid trip to a Hollywood studio lot. You're greeted at the gate by a guide who explains that there are three different movies being filmed on the lot at three different locations. As you walk toward the place where the space movie is being shot, a deafening roar fills the air. The sky turns black, and then an unearthly glow hovers all around you. Oh no! It happened! cries the guide. What happened? you ask as the eerie noise begins to subside. If it's what I think it is, we're in serious trouble. The special effects team has been working for months to create realism on the set of the space movie. They, bet a, they built a special machine that turns fantasy into reality. That explosion means that they've lost control, that the time alternator has been pushed beyond the fail-safe level. What will happen to us? You ask, afraid to hear the answer. All I know is that we're doomed to live in the new times and these new places. The movies aren't just movies anymore. They're really happening. We've exploded into a reality warp, and you and I are caught in the middle of it. The guide begins to run, and you follow him. The sky is now flashing with colors. The world turns purple, then green, then orange. As you run onto the set of the space movie, you feel your body grow light, as if gravity has disappeared, and you are no longer bound by Earth's laws. Stop! Someone shouts to you, but it's too late. You crash into an invisible barrier and fall. When you look, look up from the ground, you see three alien beings walking toward you. They motion for you to come with them. Okay, choice time here. 
You can choose to go with the aliens, option one. Instead of going with the aliens, you walk across the lot to the set of Nighttime Terror. It's option two. If you prefer to visit the set of the spy movie, option three. So if you're listening now on YouTube, I'm sorry it's not live. You're just going to have to live with the choices that we make. Maybe think about what you would have done differently if you were in the game. If you're watching us on Twitch Live, all you have to do is go into the chat, use your channel points or gold coins to select an option to influence our decision. So we've got options one through four. If for some reason the system isn't working for you, please just type your answer in the chat. And since we're just getting started and we don't have uh, anybody watching yet on Twitch, which is understandable because originally we weren't going to stream today, I'm just going to go ahead and make a choice. Now I have read this book before, but I haven't read every option, so it's not going to be totally random. I'm going to say let's go with the aliens to find out what's, what's happening. So option one. As you follow the aliens towards the glowing spaceship, you understand what the tour guide was saying. You are trapped in a reality warp. The actors have indeed become real aliens. Hasten, my friend, says one of the aliens in a computer-like voice. We must escape before the Gorks arrive. Who are the Gorks? You ask as you arrive at the spaceship. We have no time to explain, another alien shouts. He stands in an orange triangle that is glowing on the ground, and he is suddenly sucked up into the spaceship. Stand in the orange triangle if you wish to come with us, calls a voice from inside the ship. You can choose to stand on top of the orange triangle, option one. Option two, if you'd rather risk staying behind. So it shows the aliens beaming up. Their heads look like uh, the top half of a bowling ball that's been cut through the middle and so you just see these um, oval shaped eyes pointing downward and they have these um, antlers they kind of look like antelope antlers coming off of the helmet they've got these um, pointed shoulders they're kind of like hunched forward and their spaceship looks like classic flying saucer They've got their space suits have really long sleeves. They've got these webbed fingers. They've got um, boots with like really high tops on them and little claws on the feet. And it looks like they have these little uh, mouths that protrude down below the top half of the bowling ball. And then they've got they've got this webbing on their uh, torso. It looks like some type of diamond-shaped shoulder patches. Okay, so option one, stand in the orange triangle, just like they said. Option two, stay behind. I'm going to say let's go with them. They give you every opportunity to turn back, as if daring you to go forward. Trembling, you step onto the orange triangle. The lights from the spaceship bathe you in a warm blue glow. Before you have time to change your mind, you find yourself sitting on the floor of the spaceship, surrounded by ten curious aliens. Option one, if you think you should speak first. Option two, if you're too frightened to speak. I'd be too frightened to speak, so I'm just going to go with that. Option two. Alright, I'm just going to let Discord know what we're doing. Do not be afraid, says one of the aliens. We shall not harm you. Remain still while we lift off. The aliens seem kind. Kind. But you are not too certain now that you want to go with them into space. I don't know. If this was happening to me, I'd think it was a dream. I'd just say, let's see where, how far it goes. Option one, leave the spaceship, explaining to the aliens that you have another appointment. Option two, decide to trust the aliens enough to go with them. 
Of course, I've seen Star Trek: The Next Generation. I remember when the holodeck fail safes would uh, safeties would go off, and you could get killed. <laughs> you could die inside the machine. It's like that's no good. Let's see. I'm gonna trust the aliens. Within seconds, the ship has transported you to the edge of your galaxy. You look through the giant portals and are awed by the beauty of the Earth disappearing before your eyes. The black sky is dotted with billions of glowing stars. You watch in silence until finally you cannot contain your curiosity any longer. Who are you? Where do you come from? you ask. We are Moosiers from the Beacon Galaxy, one of the aliens explains. Ours is a peaceful planet. And we are interested in research. He then asks you to tell him about Earth. You explain about rivers and rainbows and the fish in the seas. You're truly enjoying yourself when you look out the portal and see a bright disc moving on a collision course towards you, your ship. Oh, this is where the fun begins. An alarm siren wails and the Moosiers rush frantically to their stations. That is our enemy, explains the leader. We did not intend to involve you in this. It is our battle, not yours. You must make a decision immediately. Both choices are dangerous. Through astral projection, we can try to place you back on the movie lot where the suspense movie is being filmed. Or you can stay with us while we wage combat with our enemy. Option one, return to the movie lot. Option two, stay on the ship. Well, hindsight's twenty twenty, but last time we had a bit of a problem. So I'm going to decide, unless someone objects, to just go ahead and go back to the movie lot, because I think we're in trouble. Pretty sure here. Alright, let's go back. Looks like we just got a little taste of Armageddon. You think anything would be better than being caught in a space movie that has become real. You do not understand yet that every movie in the lot has become real. As you approach the set of the suspense film, you see a classroom filled with children just your age. There's a teacher sitting at a desk in the front of the room. The shades are drawn, and no sunlight enters the room. The teacher, named Mr. Draco, looks at you angrily. What are you doing away from your desk? he asks. Sit down there, he points to an empty seat. Hmm... <laughs> As soon as you're seated, the kid behind you taps you on the shoulder. He whispers, That's Charlie's seat. He sat there yester until yesterday when he was murdered last night. A chill runs up your spine. If the news spooks you and you want to change seats, that's option one. Option two, you're afraid to move because the teacher might get angry at you. Option two. I don't know, this seems awfully suspicious. So the kid sat there last until yesterday and he was murdered. I don't know, if I'm in a suspense movie, anything can happen, right? I'm gonna try to move seats. Option two. It's like when they give you advice, is it reliable or not? You're relieved when school's over. Just as you're about to walk out the door, the teacher, Mr. Draco, says, Please, stay after class. I'd like to have conference with new students. Wait nervously until the children leave, and you begin to talk to Mr. Draco. Halfway through the conversation, a fetid, foul stench invades the room. If you want to get out of there and away from the stench, no matter what the consequences, turn to option one. Option two, if you think it's better to finish your conference with Mr. Draco in spite of the smell. Well, that's option two. So option one, even though it stinks in the room, option two. 
I don't know. I mean, <laughs> did he just uh, did he just let one go, uh, or is there something worse happening? Gas leak or something? Let's get away from the stench. That's option one. I'm trying to survive here. You dash out of the classroom, not knowing where you're going. You only you only understand that anything is better than being trapped with a crazy teacher. You run across the movie lot, finally entering a set that looks as if it is from a space story. Uh oh, are we trapped in time? You are standing alone, trying to decide what to do next, when you feel something growing around you. You flail your arms and kick your feet, but it is too late. You're being trapped inside a transparent bubble. The bubble begins to roll, and you tumble head over heels toward a gigantic donut-shaped spaceship. Oh, this is a different one, spaceship. You curl up in a ball, just as you're about to crash. But instead of crashing, you pass right through the wall and find yourself sprawled on the floor of the spaceship, the bubble gone. You are surrounded by a circle of silver-skinned creatures. They are gorks, and every one of them is pointing a dangerous-looking object in your direction. Okay, so from the illustration, they look semi-reptilian, and their heads have like elongated versions of human faces with no nose. We've got large eyes, of course. Um, it's hard to describe what their head looks like. It almost looks like a plucked chicken. And they're pointing these um, it's like hollow tubes with antennas sticking out. The aliens also have webbed feet and claws. Three fingers and three toes on each hand. Covered in scales. Option one, if you're so stunned that you find it impossible to speak. Option two, if you decide the wisest course would be to greet the creatures calmly. They probably think you're an intruder. But the bubble, so they pulled you in. I don't know. Speak or don't speak? Greet them calmly. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe a little ounce of bravery. Let's try option two. You stand up and offer your hand in greeting to the nearest creature. Do not move, says the voice in your head. Although you do not understand how, you know these creatures are communicating with you through thought transmission. Do not move. We are here to conquer Earth. You are going to help us. You know that you just can't allow such a hideous act to take place. You pretend that you don't hear their instructions, avoiding any sudden movements that might provoke the Gorks. You walk slowly towards the controls that you've spotted on the other side of the room. Just as the creatures lunge at you, you reach out and pull the first lever that you can touch. There's a sudden jerk, and you feel the ship lifting off the ground. The voice in your head speaks angrily. Because you pulled that lever, we are forced to depart from your planet. It will be years before we can return. You're proud that you've had the courage to save the planet Earth and its people. You hope that someday, you find a way to save yourself. The end. Interesting. So we made met two sets of aliens. We got the heck out of the <laughs> suspense movie before things got too hairy. So that was Vampire Spies and Alien Beings. It's tempting to go back and read some more, but the adventures are just so quick. Yeah, I have some fond memories of reading this when I was a kid, but I definitely didn't get all the way through it. Let's see what year did this come out. 1982. Simon and Schuster. Awesome. Okay, so that's uh, it's Which Way Books number two, if you're wanting to look that one up. Yeah, when I was a kid in the 80s, that was the thing. Go to the local library, just pick up a stack of these, and start reading. Half the time, I don't think I even took them home. I just, I'd just read them while I was sitting there, and then put them back and get some more, and at the end of the night, whichever ones I really wanted to take home, uh, I checked those out. Let's see. 
We've got Horrors of the Haunted Museum. That's Twist of Plot. We've got Ghost Hunter. We kind of got a good ending in Ghost Hunter. Choose your own adventure on the last rain cast. I guess they were saying like a ghost comes at you, stand your ground. It's the best thing. Best advice. At least from the professor. Let's see, we've got Wizards, Warriors, and you, of course. Tales of Heroism. I don't know, I'm kind of thinking towards the scary side of things. Midnight at Monster Mansion. Yes. This is like my favorite. This is my own beat up old copy from childhood. Twist to plot number 13. Ah. Midnight at Monster Mansion. Steven Otfinoski. This one has definitely much more text. So it's, I think, more for older readers than uh, the first book. And this one is 1984. What a great vacation. You've been visiting some friends who have a summer house at the beach. Now you're driving home in your father's new sports car, which he finally agreed to lend you for the trip. It's a long drive, and you decide to try and shortcut. Try a shortcut on a back road. Bad decision. Soon you're hopelessly lost. You look for a place to stop and ask directions, but there isn't a house or building in sight. That's not your only problem. You've been listening to the radio when you should have been paying attention to the gas gauge. The needle is on empty. Will you make it to a gas station before you run out? Your chances don't look good. All at once, you hear a deep rumble in the sky. You look up and see storm clouds gathering overhead. That's all you need. To be stranded in the middle of nowhere is bad enough, but in a thunderstorm? You begin to wish you'd stayed on the main highway. Better to get home an hour later than not get there at all. Think to yourself as first raindrops hit the car roof. Suddenly, you see a house up ahead on the right. There's a large ramshackle mansion set on a small hill. The house is dark and gloomy and looks about a hundred years old. It reminds you of a house you saw in a horror movie on the Late Late Show last week. A flash of lightning crackles above the mansion, bathing the old house in an eerie glow. You feel cold shivers run down your spine. You don't like the idea of being up on, in that house. But you also don't want to spend the night in your father's car during a thunderstorm. If someone is home at the house, you can ask to use the phone and call a gas station for help. Then again, if there's one house, maybe you'll pass more houses. Ones that look less creepy, that is, if you don't run out of gas first. What are you going to do? You better make up your mind quickly, the driveway to the mansion is coming up fast. So, I do have uh, some memories of this book, and they were all positive. I loved every minute of it. So welcome Lara Croft to the stream. Yeah, we're not talking Hero Quest today, we're talking game books. This is Twist to Plot number 13, Midnight at Monster Mansion, in the spirit of the Halloween season. And based on the fun we had in previous streams, I'm reading these scary books. And you are able to influence, if you are part of the Twitch chat, you're able to influence the game tonight. All you got to do is click where it says send a message, right below that you'll see a little purple one gold uh, symbol which is represents your gold coins your channel points click on that click on um, see when you click on it it will say get started here quest fans rewards and challenges and then you'll have options and you can just vote first using a certain option so like option one and two are the most common it only takes one gold coin to do that so you can influence our decision if it's not working for you for some reason go ahead and type it in the chat what you think we should do so here are options. Option one, decide to keep going and take your chances on the road. Option two, choose to stop and see if anyone is home. Vote now. Wait, what do you think? Welcome, Lord John. So we got two in chat. Yeah, originally we weren't, we weren't going to stream today, but we ended up having time. So... What is your choice? Continue on the road? Or stop at the house, the spooky house? If nobody makes a choice, I'm going to go ahead and pick one for you. Based on my memories of this book, I'll try to pick what I think is the best to keep the story going. If you disagree, let me know. Of course, if you're watching on YouTube, it's this is a replay, not live. Sorry, 
Um, you'll have to catch us in the next one. We try to do these weekly. But I don't know. If things get too busy, we might go to bi-weekly. The thing is, though, with the winter months coming, I think a lot of plans get canceled because of weather. So I'll probably be at home and I'll probably be able to stream. So Friday and Saturday are our days. If we can't do those days, Thursday is another day I try to stream or Tuesday, just whenever we can get it in. As long as my internet connection and my computer are working okay and my voice holds out, it's all good. All right. I think we're going to go ahead and just make the decision, stop and see if anyone's home at this house. You drive up the long, twisting driveway. The house looks even creepier up close. The worn shutters are all closed, but you can see light downstairs. Someone must be home. You park the car and carefully lock it. Your father would kill you if anything happened to it. Slowly you walk up the front porch steps. They squeak noisily under your feet. You feel the courage drain from you, but you raise your fist and rap loudly on the door. There is a long silence. You knock again. You can hear your heart beating wildly under the noise of the rain and thunder. Finally, you hear footsteps approaching. The door swings open and a short, stocky man in a butler's uniform stands before you. He is unshaven. His hair is long and scraggly. You can't help but notice he has a hunchback. He looks up and down at you with beady brown eyes. Well says in a low gruff voice well I guess that's it it's about time you got here take a step back startled this butler is obviously mistaking you for someone else don't just stand there fool he exclaims exclaims impatiently come in the master's waiting if the master looks anything like this servant he could do without meeting him but it's cold and it's damp out there in the rain behind the butler you can see a warm inviting fire should you accept the invitation or run for your car and take your chances on the road ahead? Alright. Choice time. Decision time. Vote with your channel points. We've got option one. Decide to go into the house. Option two. Decide to return to your car. All right, folks in the Twitch chat, feel free. Um, if you're just listening, I understand. But if you want to influence our decision, go ahead and vote. Give you a few seconds here to decide. I know what I'm going to do. All right, so we didn't have anyone uh, making a decision, so I'm going to go ahead and say let's go into the house. Give the hunchback your brightest, bravest smile and step inside. The main hall is filled with heavy, old-fashioned furniture. You notice cobwebs everywhere, but the fire is warm, and that's the important thing. Wait here, says the hunchback, closing the door. In a moment, a tall, distinguished-looking gentleman in a black cape and evening clothes enters with the servant. Ah, he says in a thick foreign accent, you're here at last. I trust your drive wasn't too difficult. I am Dr. Alucard, and this is my servant Igor. Igor figures right out of an old horror movie. And Alucard, that name sounds familiar too. Please, take off your jacket, and I will bring you the patient at once. We have no time to lose, Alucard says. Patient? You thought he was the doctor. Now, not that he looks like one. Maybe it's time you told these people just who you really are before you get into deep trouble. Of course, they may throw you back out in the storm if you do. All right, decision time again. If you decide to set this Alucard character straight right now, that's option one. If you decide to play along a, a little while longer, go to option two. Now, if this were the other book, I know what I would pick. But I think in this case, <clears throat> there is an interesting choice. Oh, 
I'll give you a few seconds to make a decision. Just checking the chat here. All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, tell Alucard really what's going on. I'm not the TV repairman. Heh, <laughs> spoilers. All right. Dr. Alucard, you begin. I'm afraid you've mistaken me for someone else. What? exclaims the host in surprise. You mean to say you are not the television repairman Igor called? No. I'm just passing through. My car's almost out of gas. I stopped here hoping to use your phone. What a shame, says Alucard, shaking his head. Igor and I were so looking forward to watching King Kong meet Spider Lady on the late, late show tonight. But I suppose we can watch TV anytime. It is a rare treat to have a guest to entertain. Please, make yourself comfortable. I will phone the local gas station for you. Meanwhile, Igor will bring you something to drink. Igor, fetch a glass of your special punch. You're about to protest, but Dr. Alucard doesn't give you the chance. He's already out of the room. Igor goes grumbling towards the kitchen. You sit down in a large, overstuffed chair, dripping rain rainwater and feeling nervous. You look out at the raindrops streaking down the windows. Wish you were safely home in bed. Watch out. Igor returns with a large glass, filled with a reddish liquid that is foaming over the sides of the glass and a steam rising from it. It looks like something you concocted last year in chemistry class. Drink this, he says, sho shoving the glass toward you. It's an old family recipe. You take the glass and say, that's really interesting. You hope he doesn't notice how shaky your voice is. Igor stands there impatiently, waiting for you to take a sip. I said drink it, he commands. You look into the steaming glass. Could the drink be drugged? Is it poison? Do you dare risking, risk insulting this weird guy by refusing his homemade punch? Okay, decision time. We've got three options. Option one, refuse to drink Igor's punch. Option two, decide to get out of drinking it by dropping the glass and making it look like an accident. Or option three, drink the awful stuff and hope for the best. All right. So. Okay, so we got option one, refuse the drink. Option two, drop it by accident. Option three, drink it. I mean, it looks like it's probably going to do something crazy. I'm thinking one or two. Anybody else uh, disagree? Looks like we're getting a little bit of an ad here. Don't be scared of ads. So, yeah, other books we've got Ghost Hunter, which was a lot of fun. Vampire Spies and Alien Beings, which we were reading earlier. Empire Strikes Back, Star Wars Choose Your Own Adventure. Somehow not that scary, although when I was a kid, I thought Empire Strikes Back was the scariest of the Star Wars movies. That darn Wampa sneaking up on you. <laughs> it's funny because the ad I got was uh, people drinking weird punch. So, what do you know? We got Wizards, Warriors, and You, Challenge of the Wolf Knight. It's kind of a horror themed one. That one I haven't read. I found Wizards, Warriors, and You to be more difficult. I mean, you really, you really got to know what's going on. We've also got Siege of the Dragon Riders, which we've read before. And what do you know? One of the ads has dragons in it. <laughs> and then we've got Horrors of the Haunted Museum, which we've read before a little bit. Castle of No Return, which we haven't done yet. Not all these ads have coincidentally ties to what we're doing. Okay, we're back. 
almost said on the rant cast but no this is not the rant cast this is hero quest fans we're doing game book reading blast from the past in the spirit of halloween and fun we're doing these interactive game books midnight at monster mansion one of my favorites from childhood i love this book it was one of those uh, school book orders that we got anyway we got three options refuse to drink the weird stuff that igor is about to give us pretend to, to drop the glass getting out of it make it look like an accident or drink the awful stuff hope for the best i'm thinking option two it's page 13 lucky 13 let's drop the glass and go oops oh man <laughs> i should have known okay i've forgotten i mean i can remember almost all the choices i just don't remember which ones are endings or not okay You'd rather let the glass drop. Well, let's... You'd rather let the glass drop to the floor than drink its sickening contents. You let the warm glass slip through your fingers and it shatters on the floor. You reach down to pick up some of the pieces of broken glass just as Dr. Alucard returns. A piece of glass cuts your finger. Bright drops of blood ooze out. You look up and see a strange, wild gleam come into the doctor's eyes. He's looking at your cut finger as if he were hypnotized by it. As he approaches, he opens his mouth, and two large fangs emerge. Suddenly you realize, in horror, why the name Alucard sounded so familiar. It's simply Dracula spelled backwards. Your host is a vampire! He begins to suck the blood from your finger. You try to pull away, but his grip holds you. Still thirsty, he goes for your neck. You feel his sharp fangs sink to your skin. You cry out in horror, but soon you give in to the hypnotic spell of Count Dracula. By the end of the night, you're a vampire. Just like Dracula. Don't feel too bad about it, though. After all, you live at least a thousand years. The end. And the picture is uh, just of him closing in on you. Should have known. All right. Midnight at Monster Mansion. All right. So I guess uh, we're just going to go back and let's pick another book. I think that's kind of been our um, MO for a while is when we get a, an ending, we switch books. Just keep it, keep it, uh, keep it fresh. Keep it going. Horrors of the Haunted Museum. This has a lot of whispering in it. I hope my voice holds out. Shout out to Nick V and Luke V for this one. This is R.L. Stein. Twist of Plot number 9, 1983. Very good year. You're not serious about spending the night in this place, are you? Your friend Mike asks. Of course I'm serious, you reply, leaning against totem pole in the far corner of the American Indian room. Kelly and Derek both dared us, and we accepted. We can't chicken out now. Mike rests his elbows on the top of a glass case. It contains an authentic model of an Indian Pueblo. But you don't believe all that garbage about this museum being haunted, about the mummy coming to life every night? Neither do I. So what's the point, he asks. The point is, they dared us, you say. Bell rings. The signal that the museum is closing. The museum guard pokes his head in the American Indian room. He doesn't see you or Mike. Point is, I don't care. I'm going home, Mike says. Maybe you're a little scared after all, he suggests. Mike waves a fist at you and pretend anger. The bell rings again. You hear the footsteps on the marble floor of the last people leaving the museum. The two of you continue to argue, but your mind is made up. You're spending the night in the museum. Will you be able to convince Mike to stay with you? It's a dumb idea. We'll only get in trouble, Mike says, starting to walk toward the exit. What about our parents? We took care of that, you reminded him. You said you're staying over at my house, and I said you're staying over at your house. Another museum guard passes by, but he doesn't see the two of you in the far corner. Outside the room's only window, you see that the sun is almost set. The museum grows silent. Silence is complete. I'm sorry, Mike says. I just 
I just don't want to do this. I'm not a chicken or anything. I just want to go home and have supper. See ya. He walks quickly towards the main hall and the exit. You start to go after him, but you change your mind. Okay, fine, you tell yourself. I'll stay here without him. Listen to your footsteps clicking on the cold floors. You listen to his footsteps clicking on the cold floors, fading into the distance. The lights in the room dim, the air conditioner shuts off. You stand and wait for your eyes to adjust to the darkness. A few moments go by. What a story this will be to tell. Just about everyone you know has talked about spending the night in this creepy place. But you are actually doing it. Hey, wait a minute. What are those footsteps? They're getting louder. They're definitely coming your way. Slow, slow footsteps. Who could be walking so slowly, so quietly? Should you turn and run, or should you wait to see who approaches? Again, my first thought is it's the security guard. Option one, choose to run. Option two, choose to see who's coming. Then again, if they catch you, I mean, you could just make up some excuse like, oh, I didn't know, whatever. <laughs> just a kid, sorry, get in trouble, spend the night in jail. Um, or if it's the creepy monster, you might get killed and that would be the end. Oh man, I guess I'm going to choose to run. Unless somebody has an objection. Let me just check the chat. I think we're down to just one person. So you and me, Lara Croft. If you're a bot, I uh, sincerely apologize. <laughs> but we'll see. Okay, option one, we're going to run. The slow, slow footsteps are coming nearer. Your heart is pounding in your chest. Whoever it was that entered the American Indie Room, whoever it is must know that someone else is in the room. You turn to run and wham! You run headfirst into a glass display case. Ouch! You never knew glass was so hard. You sit down until you stop seeing stars. It's too late to run now. You have no choice but to face whoever or whatever is pursuing you. You've never really known true terror before. But you're pretty sure that's what you're feeling now. Your arms and legs are shaking so badly, you're not sure you can get them to move. The footsteps come closer. Closer. Who is it? It can't be the night watchman. He'd be carrying a flashlight. Perhaps the stories about the old museum are true. Perhaps the mummy really does walk the floors at night. Perhaps... Hey, it's me, Mike says. I'm back door was already locked. I couldn't get out. I had a hard time finding you in the dark. I had to walk really slowly so I wouldn't bump into anything. Hey, uh, are you alright? Fine, you say. I'm fine. Wait a few seconds for your heart to stop pounding. Guess we're in this thing together now. Just the two of us. I say finally. Uh-oh, Mike says, suddenly grabbing your arm. I think it's three of us. Sure enough, there are new footsteps clicking on the marble floor. These footsteps are approaching quickly. Stay calm. Stay calm. He whispered to Mike, stay calm. Stop repeating yourself, Mike whispers. Have you gone nuts or something? This is no time for discussion, you whisper. We've got to get out of here. Good thinking, Mike whispers. The footsteps are in the same room as you. Has someone heard the two of you? Or is someone making these ghostly rounds in his nightly search for human victims? Staying close together so that you can see each other, you and Mike run into the back hallway. Two rooms stand in front of you. To escape the approaching footsteps, you must duck into the Egyptian mummy room or the Caribbean pirate's room. Quick, make your choice. Okay, option one, mummy room. Option two, pirate's room. Now, I could do the 50% thing, but I think I'm just going to roll with it. Um, anybody object? I'm going to pick option one, the mummy room. It's kind of what we came for. The two of you turn and run as fast as you can into the mummy room. The room is dark. Two night lights against the far wall give off a faint orange glow. Do the slow footsteps go the other way? Scrape. Scrape. No! Someone. Something still pursues you. You hear the scraping of a heavy foot dragging across the marble floor. 
then a footstep, then the dragging foot again. Scrape, step, scrape, step. Try to say something to Mike. You're so scared that your mouth opens, but no sound comes out. In the darkness, you can see that he is as frightened as you are. Scrape, step, scrape, step. The footsteps stop. Silence. All you can hear now is the pounding of your heart, ticking of your watch. Scrape, step, scrape, step. They start again. Closer. So close, he feels as if he could reach out and grab whatever it is walking towards you in the dark, cold room. The mummy! He finally managed to whisper to Mike. It must be the mummy! It sounds like a mummy! You mean... Mike says, The rumors are true? Scrape. Step. Quick, into the pyramid, you whisper, pulling at Mike's sleeve. Whatever it is, won't look for us in there. <laughs> what kind of logic is that? You both look at the giant, reconstructed pyramid across the room from you. No! Mike cries. We'll be trapped in there. Who knows what's in there? They, they moved it stone by stone from Egypt. Who knows what's out there, you cry. Scrape. Step. Scrape. Step. You better decide fast. Should you run into the pyramid to hide, or should you stay and face whoever is approaching? Option one, choose the pyramid. Option two, choose not to move from your hiding place. Whatever it is is chasing us into deeper and deeper into whatever is happening at this museum. Into the pyramid. Hmm. We're gonna face whatever it is. I mean, maybe the maybe the night watchman just has a bum leg, but again, no flashlight is mentioned, so. Hmm. Well, if you have a if you have a suggestion, option one is the pyramid. Option two is stay in your hiding place. Once again, thanks to uh, White Bat Audio's Carl Casey on YouTube for the cool mood, mood music. It's got a lot of horror themed stuff on there, and it's free. So thanks for that. Oh man. See, this is not a book I read a lot as a kid. I I think I saw it on the shelf. It looks really familiar, but I don't think I read it before we started doing streams. So I don't know what's going to happen. 50% chance. Let's go with the first one. Option one, you can shake your head. All you people on YouTube already know the outcome. Let's, uh, let's go to option one and see what happens. Scrape, step, scrape, step. The footsteps approach, slow but steady. One foot stepping with a loud click on the marble floor. The other foot dragging slowly forward with a dry, scraping sound. I'm not hanging around to find out what that is, you whisper to Mike. You turn and run into the open pyramid. You don't even look back to see if Mike is following you, but the sounds of running feet and hard breathing tell you that he is right behind you. It's dark in the pyramid, but the long, narrow corridor within you find yourself running through is straight. You're running to escape whatever is pursuing you, and you don't think about what lies ahead in this replica of an ancient Egyptian burial tomb. Wait! Stop a minute! You cry to Mike, your voice echoing again and again through the cavernous structure. You both stop and listen. Are you being followed? No. No footsteps. We've lost him! You cry happily. Mike struggles to catch his breath. Great, he says, his voice still a whisper. But now, where are we? The corridor makes a right turn, and then a left turn. There has to be an exit around here somewhere, you say. If only we could see where... And you burst out laughing. You realize you've both forgotten about something. <laughs> Our flashlights, you say, reaching into your pack. We forgot we brought flashlights. I can't believe it! With your flashlights on, you can see where you're going. You can see the gray, rotting walls, see the damp cracks in the crumbling stone floor, see the spiderwebs hanging from the ceilings. One thing you cannot see is a way out. Seems a little strange. I mean, wouldn't they have cleaned the pyramid for the museum? And you could say, well, maybe it's the display's been there a long time, it's gathered more spiderwebs. I mean, is this something people are supposed to go inside or not? Kind of odd that it seems uncleaned. 
One thing you cannot see is a way out. Mike, say your voice shaking. I think we're lost. Can you find your way out of the ancient pyramid? The narrow corridors lead to wider rooms. The rooms lead to narrow, curving corridors. The rooms are all empty except for the spiders that have made the pyramid their home, filling every corner with thick webs. Have we been in this room before? Mike asks. I can't tell, you admit. They all look alike. How long have we we've been walking? It seems like hours and hours, Mike says, his voice a lot higher than usual. Well, let me try that again. How long have we been walking? It seems like hours and hours, Mike says, his voice a lot higher than usual. I don't I don't think it's been that long, you say, struggling to control your voice. We we've gotta stay calm, Mike. We can't panic. We got there's gotta be a way out of this creepy place. The museum wouldn't put up a pyramid without at least a couple of exits, right? Mike doesn't answer, right? I know, you say, struggling to sound cheerful. Let's just turn around and go back the way we came in. Which way is that? Mike asks gloomily. He's right. You don't remember which which way you came in. You made so many twists and turns in these dark halls that you've lost all sense of direction. It's this way, I'm pretty sure, you say, even though you're not pretty sure. Maybe we should just wait here for someone to find us, Mike suggests. But Mike, no one knows we're here, remember? Come on. We've got to look on the bright side. At least we lost the mummy that was chasing us. Maybe, Mike mutters. You walk a little further, your flashlights moving quickly up and down over the gray, cracked walls. Suddenly you enter a large chamber. At the far end of it, you can make out two rooms. One room leads into a brightly lit chamber. A sign hangs over the doorway. Someone has translated the hieroglyphics. It reads, Cursed be those who dare to enter this chamber of treasure. The other door seems to lead into more darkness. Listen, I'm not going into a room with a curse on it, Mike says. I don't care how bright and cheerful it is in there. But the other room is as dark and empty as all the others we've been through, you argue. Maybe this room is bright because it leads out of the pyramid. Which doorway do you choose to go through? Option one, choose the doorway with the curse above it. Option two, choose the other doorway. All right, decision time again. I mean, I say 50% chance, but I mean, we don't know. However, the uh, author structured this book. I mean, one choice leads to other choices. Maybe it leads to death or some creepy fate. I mean, who's, who's to say, right? Hmm. Let's see, we've got flashlights. Could we fight? I mean... <laughs> hard to say you know what what would you do against a mummy pull on his wrappings <laughs> let's see doorway with the curse other doorway hmm you would think that if there really was a real curse that it would affect the museum Maybe they're in on it, or maybe it's just a you know a theatrical flourish they put in just to. But is is going inside the pyramid part of the display? Think of the logic of it, you know. Oh man. Okay. Well, uh, let's let's try option one. Yolo, right? Okay. Option one. Let's go to the so-called cursed treasure room. Those ancient Egyptians curses only work in bad old horror movies with Boris Karloff, you tell Mike. Don't worry about a stupid curse. What do you know about ancient curses, Mike asked, backing away. They wouldn't put curses up above the doorway if they didn't work. Look, Mike, it also says it's a treasure room, you say, shining your flashlight across the words on the sign. You wouldn't mind finding some ancient treasure and becoming rich, would you? I just want to get out of here in one piece, Mike insists. I don't want a curse on my head for the rest of my life. I just want out. Come on, calm down. You put a hand on his shoulder. Follow me. I'm pretty sure this will lead us out of here. Still holding onto Mike's shoulder, you walk under the curse sign and through the doorway into the brightly lit chamber. It takes a while for your eyes to adjust. 
But when you do, you find yourself in a richly decorated room with bright tapestries on the walls and thick, colorful carpeting. Then you see several large, hand-carved chests against the walls. Wow, you cry. Imagine this incredible room hidden deep in this pyramid. And look, look at the treasure chests. You rush forward and open one of the chests. It's filled to the top with jewelry and ancient gold coins. Mike, come here, look. It really is treasure. Unbelievable, you cry. Your eyes are dazzled by the glittering gold and jewels under your hands. Mike, we're rich. we got to get out of here first, Mike says, not sharing your enthusiasm. Hey, no problem, you start to say, but you stop because you hear something. Flapping wings. The sounds of dozens of flapping wings. Suddenly, into the treasure chamber fly dozens of giant owls. Fierce expressions on their faces. Long-beaked owls with their talons raised, ready to attack. Quick, run, Mike yells. No! You try to stop him. If we run, we'll get even more lost and we'll lose the treasure. You choose to run away from these attacking owls or stay and try to fight them off. When you think about it, owls are pretty pretty big and scary. I mean, they've got big claws. This is like Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. You've got flashlights. Are these like little mag lights or are they like those big old like 80s flashlights that you could just like clock a animal with? Maybe the curse is like gold fever, like you uh, stay in there with the treasure. Okay, option one, choose to run. Option two, stay and fight. Hmm. I don't think we won't get to keep the treasure because it belongs to the museum. On the other hand, if they did, somehow didn't know about it, which doesn't make any sense, they give you some kind of reward. I mean, unless we've teleported through time and we're actually in ancient Egypt, not just in the museum. Hmm. How many owls are there? Oh man, I just don't know. Let's uh, let's stay and fight. Option two. It's probably wrong, but let's see what happens. These owls are three times as big as normal owls. You cry. And they look three times as mean. How, how can we fight them, Mike asks, looking around the room. You look desperately around the room for some kind of weapon. There are only decorations and treasure chests. The owls swoop right by your faces, screeching at the top of their lungs. Their eyes narrow slits of evil. Their mouths pull back tightly and attack grins. You dodge away from them, the ones that swoop at you, then duck behind a chest as two more plunge forward. We can't fight them, Mike cries, and we can't keep ducking them forever. The attack stops as suddenly as it began. The owls stop their furious flapping. They glide now up to the top of the wall, where the molding forms a ledge. They glide up to the ledge, their eyes close, and, the land, and they land softly. Look, that's where they nest, whispered to Mike. The two of you stare in disbelief. They, they're going to sleep, he cried. Yeah, a little, little louder. The owls seem to puff up as they lower their feathered heads into their bodies, close their eyes, and sleep. I don't believe it. I just don't believe it, Mike cries. I do, you say with a big smile. It's so bright in here, Mike. It's as bright as daylight. Yeah? So what? Well, owls sleep in daylight. They're night creatures, remember? Right, night creatures. What a lucky break. Now if we can only get out of here with the treasure, you add. Can you get out with the treasure? Look, Mike, I know this is the right room, you cry, pointing to a doorway you hadn't noticed before. There's an exit sign over that door, a modern exit sign, just like all the others in the museum. Whoopee, Mike cries, let's go. What about the treasure, you ask? Look at all these old coins, all these old jewels. We're rich, Mike. We can't just leave the stuff here. Oh, yes, we can, Mike cries, heading towards the exit sign. You must make a big decision here. Should you leave the treasure in this room and get out of the pyramid as fast as you can? Or should you drag the treasure chest out with you? See, I'm thinking of the logic of it again. Option one, leave without the treasure. Option two, drag the treasure out. Because if you're really in the museum, that's theft. They're going to get you. You're going to be in big trouble. If you're like in a portal through time or something, who knows? Maybe you will be rich. But people are going to see you like leaving the museum with all this treasure. A big huge treasure chest just doesn't seem practical. Is the treasure cursed? What does it mean? Option one, leave without the treasure. Option two, drag the treasure out with you. 
Anybody in the chat have an idea? I'm just gonna check something real quick here. Just have a suspicion. I'm not cheating. Ah, uh, Lara Croft is a bot. Sorry. Eh, let me just remove that bot from our chat. Should have known. And you're banned. And you're blocked. I ah, might as well report the bot too. Spooky bots. Spooky. Bots creep me out, man. All right, back to the game book. Horrors of the Haunted Museum. Twist of plot number nine. So far, I'm liking this one. I mean, again, it's uh, not one that I read back in the day. It is R.L. Stein, future writer of the Goosebumps series, which passed me by because I was a little older and I wasn't that interested in spooky stories for kids. But back when I was a kid, this was the kind of stuff I liked to read. So it's good. All right, let's leave without the treasure. Seems the most logical. Maybe next time we'll try something a little more bold and wacky. There must be millions and millions of dollars worth of treasure here, you tell Mike, pulling him away from the exit. We can't just leave it, we can't! Mike thinks about it for a moment. Wait a minute, what? I thought we decided not to take the treasure. Leave without the treasure. Oh, whoops. <laughs> the other one. Alright, leave without the treasure. I'm getting out of here, Mike cries. I don't care about the treasure, I just want to get out. He runs towards the door. You agree that he is right. You quickly follow him. The two of you burst through the exit door, out of the old pyramid and into the familiar museum room. Hey, you two, what are you doing here? It's the night watchman. You've run right in front of him. Man, we're glad to see you, you cry. We've been trapped in the pyramid all night. That's right, Mike says. We've been wandering from room to room. Down one hall and then another, we couldn't find our way out. The night watchman looks at both of you as if you're crazy. You two are gonna have to come with up with a better story than that, he says, laughing at you. It's true, it's true, you both insist. The night watchman laughs again. It can't be true. That pyramid isn't real or anything, it's a hollow shell. It's just a stage prop some movie company gave us. What do you mean? you ask. I can't be we we Come here, I'll show you, he says. Oh, we're getting an ad. Uh, you know what? On the replay, you're going to hear all this, so I'll just keep on reading. What do you mean, you ask? I can't be. We, we, were, we were inside, and we were running around. Come on, I'll show you, he says, leading you back to the door that you just came out of. He opens the door, and you look inside. The pyramid is indeed a hollow shell. No corridors. No rooms. No halls. No owls. No treasure room or treasure. The night watchman closes the door and leads you to his small office. Now, suppose you tell me what really happened to you two tonight. Uh, you go first, Mike says. Go ahead, tell him. The end. Nah. <laughs> well, I guess we'll remember that knowledge for next time. Although, with some of these books, they're really clever by half, because knowing that knowledge, we know that that pyramid is a time vessel, and we're transported back to ancient Egypt, so that treasure is real. So if we brought it through, well, of course, I guess we don't know. If we bring it through, does it, does it turn into real treasure, or does it turn into something else? Okay, so that's what we would do. With that knowledge, you could go back and do it. But some books I've seen, they, they take that into consideration. So if you do it the other way, it's not the case. So you probably would grab the treasure and you'd come out and they'd be like, hey, you're stealing from the display. You're under arrest. You know? <laughs> or your parents are going to put you in juvenile detention. You know, something like that. So it's like either way you lose in, in some, some books. But I just don't know if that's one of those books or if there's like a thread running through it of consistency. Some of these books, they just mess with you psychologically. 
which is what we loved. I mean, it was real, a lot of fun. So, I love these. These are fun. So we're back to game books reading. So we did Horrors of the Haunted Museum, Midnight at Monster Mansion, Vampire Spies and Alien Beings. And we did get started a little bit late, so I think let's do a little bit more. So we got another book here from uh, R.G. Austin. Yeah, I, I would say Horrors of the Haunted Museum, good one. I, I like it. I'd definitely read more of it. I think it's just the perfect kind of thing uh, for these. You know, it just really gets the imagination going. I just I just love that. Okay, it's Castle of No Return. This is Which Way Books number one, R.G. Austin. So it was a new series back then. Illustrated by Mike Eagle. Just little black and white illustrations. I like using my imagination more in these books. This is 1982. For Ben, with love and thanks for all his help. Cool. So you choose your own adventure is good, but I like these other series. And I think I read, I read probably as many choose your own adventure books as I read other books. But I feel like choose your own adventures were good. And yeah, there was a lot of like blood and gore and stuff and like just crazy deaths. But these other books, they tried to go the extra mile. A lot of them to just try to be really spooky, scary, a lot of detail. And I really like that. So as a kid, you like to be scared. All right, so this is The Castle No Return. One night, as you're watching your favorite television program, the picture begins to wiggle and a loud buzz fills the room. You try to adjust the set, but nothing works. In fact, the picture gets worse and the buzz gets louder. Angry and frustrated, you turn off the TV. You talk to your friends and discover that every television set in town has been disrupted. The next morning, you hear strange electronic sounds. You discover they've been coming from the woods behind your house. You decide to investigate them. You put your Swiss Army knife in your pocket and set out in the direction of the noise. I had a Swiss Army knife. You've been hiking for hours. The sky suddenly turns black and you're caught in a fierce storm. The storm is short, but you're wet and shivering. And you come to a part of the woods where you've never been before. In front of you is a castle, a real castle with a moat and turrets and high walls. To the side of you is a rickety old shack. Decision time. Option one, choose to swim the moat in order to reach the castle. Whoa, that, that sounds really dangerous. Option two, explore the shack. Okay, so there's a shack and there's a castle. So my first thought is, okay, this is some type of like medieval times thing. Shack is probably just like a tool shed or supply thing, or maybe like there's a proprietor or something that lives there while they putting the thing together. Some crazy, I don't know, tourist thing. Option one is swim the moat. That just seems really drastic. I mean, where's my sense of adventure? Option two, explore the shack. I'm going to go with the shack. So let's take option two. Again, if you're uh, watching this or listening to this on YouTube, sorry, we are not live. Um, we're only live on Twitch. When we do these, these are typically on a Friday, uh, 2 to 4 p.m. Central Time. When we do, Just like when we do HeroQuest on a Saturday, it's 6 to 10 p.m. Central Time. And like I was saying, our, strat our um, schedule is going to be a little wacky this month and next month, potentially. Um, but... We will try to stream at least once a week with something. I mean, if it's the rant cast every other Thursday, so next week, next Thursday is the plan. If we can, uh, Fridays, Saturdays, if we can't do that, then maybe a Tuesday night. If we're going to be on vacation, you will see it on the Twitch schedule, which will tell um, what days we're off, which ones we're coming back. And we'll try to announce it in Discord as well, like if there's going to be a delay. Stuff happens, you know. Okay, let's take option two. We'll check out this uh, rickety old shack. You walk toward the shack. There's no light inside, but you hope the door is unlocked so that you can go in and warm yourself. By now, you're shivering so violently that your whole body is shaking. You can barely control yourself enough to knock on the door. Just as you raise your hand, you hear the ferocious growl of a dog. Option one, decide to knock on the door and enter the shack. Option two, decide that you don't, do not want to go in. 
I'm picturing like a caretaker with a dog. Chris, it might just be a dog. Hmm. Oh, I see. You haven't yet knocked on it. I'm like, wait a minute. The dog already knows you're there, so what good is it going to do? There's a human there. I'm going to say let's knock. Option one. You knock. A light goes on, and the door opens slowly. Hello, says a man. My name is Boris. Come in from the cold. You glance at the large mastiff that's chained to the wall. Do not worry about killer, says Boris. He will not do anything without my command. All right. You, you say, all right? You say in a shaky voice as you enter the shack. You look hungry, Boris says. Would you like a bowl of soup? Option one, decide to eat Boris's soup. Option two, decide not to eat Boris's soup. Hmm, well... I mean, we turned on hospitality last time and see where it got us. Don't know this guy. Can we trust him? Soup? Uh, I don't know. It's like I'm tempted to say no, we shouldn't trust it, but... You know, for the sake of adventure, I mean... We didn't swim the moat. What if we, again, what if we got sucked into medieval times? It is the Castle of No Return. This is a different series, but it might be the same concept. Let's go. All right. Option one, let's eat the soup. Anybody object? Now's the time. Again, if this is YouTube, you know the answer. All right. The soup is hot and tasty. All right. You finish it quickly. I was surprised, you say, to see a castle here in the woods. Nobody in town knows that it's here. It has always been a secret, Boris explains. We are involved in scientific research, and we do not want to be disturbed. What kind of research, you ask? Oh, powers of the mind, mostly, answers Boris. ESP, hypnosis, psychokinesis, that sort of thing. Psycho what, you ask, not understanding the word. Psychokinesis, he repeats. The science of moving objects with the power of the mind. Watch. Boris picks up a spoon and places it on the palm of your hand. Then he stares at the spoon. With an intense, powerful glare, you feel the spoon getting warm, and it begins to twist. When Boris is finished, the spoon looks like a pretzel. I carry on with my experiments in the control room, says Boris. Would you like to see it? Okay, this <laughs> I was not expecting this. I was expecting, like, you get sucked in the Middle Ages. It's like, nope, psychic weirdness. Okay, so option one, go to the control room with Boris. Option two, don't go into the control room. Well, if he can do that to a spoon, who knows what else he can do? Was it a trick, or is it real? Can we trust this guy? Hmm... I mean, we've trusted him thus far. What's he going to do? Recruit us into his spying program? Option one, go to the control room. Option two, don't go to the control room. Maybe we're in too deep. Let's go to option one. Go to the control room. Boris looks at you and snaps his fingers. Let's be off, he says as he raises the trap door on the floor this way please you follow him into a tunnel as you walk you hear the noise of animals scurrying along the path in front of you when you emerge from the tunnel you realize that you're inside the castle wait a minute I just had a thought what if this guy is a complete charlatan what if the soup was had some hallucinogenic drugs in it and you seeing the spoon twisting before you is just an illusion what if this guy is a complete crook and he's gonna kill you and bury you in the crawl space okay I don't know where this is going so I guess anything is possible when you emerge from the tunnel you realize that you're inside the castle you follow Boris into a room that is filled with flashing lights 
You're very frightened and think you should run from here as quickly as possible. That would not be wise, Boris says, reading your mind. What? Option one, decide to make a run for it. Option two, decide to stay and find out what happens next. Oh man, are we going to be able to take this guy? What if he, uh... It's dangerous. Not be wise. Hmm. <sighs> <laughs> I just don't know. It's like being in the haunted house. You know the scary thing is coming. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's going to scare you anyway. You just can't help it. Uh, make a run for it is option one. Option two, see what happens next. The flashing lights are probably to hypnotize you further. Again, what's he going to make you do? If you run away, what's the danger? Is he just saying that? Keep you there? Hmm. Okay, let's let's just take option two. See what happens. If we lose, I guess we'll just be changing books. We can go a little past four just because we didn't start on time. That was a wise decision, says Boris. He points to a chair in the middle of the room. Please, sit down. You sit in the chair. The flashing lights make your skin turn strange colors. Slowly, slowly, you feel yourself drifting away. Oh, man. The lights swirl around you. Soon you have the sensation that you are no longer yourself. Boris has incorporated you into his mind. Whoa. It is an hour later. You're still in the room with Boris. You belong to him now. But you do not care. This is where I belong, you think, a smile creeping over your face. This is what I should be doing. It is pleasant and warm in the castle with Boris. He is a nice man, after all. I think I will like it here. The end. <laughs> Creepy. Dang. <laughs> so I guess... I should have gone with my instincts there. I was thinking, this is really suspicious. And of course, it's always like, what are these books trying to tell kids? Are they trying to try to tell them, hey, your life is boring. Go have an adventure. Just knock yourself out. Or are they telling you, hey, best thing to do, don't talk to strangers. Don't eat strange food that people give you. Stay, you know, stay in the light. Stay uh, within view of your own home. Don't go out looking for your heart's desire because, you know... <laughs> you might, uh, you know, curiosity killed the cat and all that. So, who's to say what they're trying to tell the kids? So, yeah, just adjusting the old camera there a little bit. Well, that was the Castle of No Return. I, I liked it. Again, it kept me guessing. Sometimes your instincts are right. Sometimes there's a logic to the book. Other times, just craziness. But yeah, I, I didn't. I had no idea what this one was about. Mysterious woods, a castle. Of course, that made me think. I was thinking. I was still in that time travel idea from the horrors of the haunted musician, but uh, museum. But I mean, <laughs> musician. But I mean, that's a totally different series. That's twist of plot. This is which way books. Totally different author. R. G. Austin. Oh man. Well. <clears throat> Guess we still got some time. Maybe it's time we uh, go back into the medieval fantasy world of Wizards, Warriors, and you. Keep reading the Siege of the Dragon Riders, trying to finally find a way through it. We might have to roll some dice. We'll have to figure that out. I wonder if the dice that we've got have any glowy properties. Because we've got... Um, Got our black light going. Yeah, no, no glowy properties there. Let's check, because we got some other dice. See, I could have chosen... Nope, nothing there. Nope. 
No. Everything's too dark to really show up. It all depends on the type of paint you use and everything. Oh, yeah, I got some things I can show you. So I have acquired some new dice. And I'll uh, most likely incorporate that into the next uh, stream that we do. Next game stream. Don't think about these black lights. I'm not sure like how long. Because it's like sunlight. So would you really want to focus it on stuff that can take UV damage? So probably not. Um, a lot of these cards have like special UV protection. So they're probably okay. But like old papers, old books, old posters. If it's not designed for a black light, you probably don't want to expose it long to something like that. In case it might like bleach it. Just like sunlight. You know, getting a tan. So... I'll be right back. Just give me a minute here. Thanks for joining us on HeroQuest Fans on this uh, Friday. Alright, I'm back. Welcome to uh, HeroQuest fans here on this Friday. We're doing game book readings. So, a couple things. I, I noticed, unfortunately, to my dismay, that some of my acrylic paints that I've been storing for years now, um, a lot of them, you know, I just opened up, used them once, put them away. It's starting to get thick as if they're drying out. I was like, no, not again. I mean, I guess it's uh, use it or lose it, but. One of the tips that I was given is, well, it's water-based acrylic. You can just add a few drops of uh, distilled water, um, sh hot, you know, distilled water, shake it up, and that'll uh, keep it keep it good for a little while longer. Let's see, this is glow-in-the-dark paint. That was a little bit of a glowy effect, actually. Whoa, look at that! It's like a flashlight. That's awesome. <laughs> cool. Yeah, because it's just like the sun absorbing it yeah so actually if you're using a black light you could uh, get some really glowy paints that way so that's nice okay so these are the hero quest dice I've actually uh, painted these up I've just touched up the paint on them you can't really see very well Yeah, we can we can just save those for later. But basically, uh, the black was coming off of them, so I was using some paint to kind of clean them up a little bit. And I've got these wooden dice, which you can't see very well either. I'll just show them. Yeah, we'll just do that on another stream. Yes, yeah, so uh, there's some of those like wood colored um, inscribed HeroQuest dice off of Etsy. I'll have to credit the uh, creator of those. But this is not a sponsored stream, so we're just going to like set those aside for now, not talk about them, other than to say they look cool, and we'll see what they look like under normal lighting conditions next time we do an actual HeroQuest stream, which could be as early as tomorrow. But yeah, let's get the other glow-in-the-dark paint. Let's see. Okay, so this is... This is uh, supposed to be blue and visible ink. Whoa, look at that. That really lights up when the black light hits it. I had no idea this stuff was that glowy. So I'll probably have to get some more of this. What I'm wanting to do is make one of those uh, posters where it's like a map and it's got secret directions or secret writing on it. If you use this, you could really make it awesome. Yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. So this is not sponsored or anything, but that's Optics Black Light Reactive Blue Invisible Ink. Now I'm not sure if this stuff like loses its glow over time, or if it stays glowy like indefinitely. 
Not designed for or safe to be used with printers or tattoos. Best viewed in dark, shaded area. Suited for use on skin, fabric, and similar porous or textured surfaces. Fully visible on, under ultraviolet light. Glows bright blue. Whereas this other stuff is just glow in the dark. Well, this says phosphorescent glow. Let's see what other ones I've got. As a kid in the 80s, you know, glow in the dark stuff was always so cool. Now, unfortunately, back in the 50s and 60s, they had actual radioactive stuff in watches. So I've been told, hey, if you get stuff, just like getting like metal miniatures, like from a certain time period, they're going to have lead in them. So you want to avoid all that stuff. But yeah, the non-radioactive glow-in-the-dark stuff, it's just light reactive. It's harmless. I mean, don't eat it, but <laughs> looks really cool. It's really fun. But we always charge them up with like regular lights or like sunlight. But black lights, wow. I can see why this was like a big thing like in the 70s and 80s. All right, let me just grab some more to experiment with here. Something so simple as lights can cause uh, endless fascination. All right, so let's, ooh, there's the orange. That's nice and glowy. Not as glowy as some of the others, but it's definitely got a glow to it when it's exposed to the light. So you've got green. Ooh, yeah, it's just like a, again, it's like a flashlight these bottles of acrylic paint. So this is um, folk art. It's cheap craft paint. Oh. That's nice and glowy. It's like uh, it separates out because you can see there's like little glowy, oh, the whole thing is lighting up. There's like glowy particles within the larger mass of paint. And again, that's just the regular glow-in-the-dark stuff. Now this stuff, this is supposed to be for like fishing lures. It's really glowy. This stuff, I mean, it's it's got like chunks of like powder or something in it move this crystal skull out of the way here. This stuff I ordered specially. Let's see. That needs some water added to it, some distilled water. I'll have to add some more water to that. Get it going again. You know, just like um, if you have old USB drives, you want to back them up. You want to add water to your paint. This is white acrylic paint. I guess this titanium white does not phosphoresce. Let's see what else we can get. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get on HeroQuest fans, right? So, obviously this is not HeroQuest related. This is just spooky colors and just showing you stuff that I've got. Alright, let's grab some more and see what we can do.
We got some uh, art and glow, glow in the dark powder. Let's see. What that stuff does. Gee, the white label glows more than the actual powder. Let's hold it up here and see what it does. Okay, it does phosphoresce. Takes a little bit more time to absorb the light. But I mean, a black light is still a light. Even though it looks kind of like dark purple. There's the actual glowy effect. So, it's pretty cool. So yeah, you could, I think I've seen some people who have painted their miniatures with this stuff. And there's like glowy dice that you can use too. So you could play a whole game. The only thing is, again, I would be worried that stuff that you printed out yourself would get dulled or faded by the black light over time. Uh, would you get a suntan for uh, being under a black light? I mean, you scientific minded people can tell me if that's what would happen. Hey, Jay, sir. See, you're just the guy I was thinking of. Use neon paint on Hero Quest so Glow in the Dark Hero Quest is feasible. So, Jay, sir, in your research or in your experience, have you noticed anything about like, um, like printed paper cards being faded by the exposure to the UV um, black light? Because I know there's fake black lights you can buy. They're just purple bulbs. This is an actual like, um, CFL tube fluorescent light yeah now that you're here I should get back to my uh, game book reading because all we had in here was a bot yeah I've got some glow-in-the-dark dice I'm gonna grab those real quick I'll be right back yeah it's all uh, it's rave quest <laughs> Not really, I use the CFL as well. Okay. Well, Jay, sir, I appreciate you joining us. So these are called party dice. I mean, I guess they're supposed, they're advertised as going with like drinking games and stuff. I, I don't know why, why you do that. But um, I can see you using these at, at a party where there's like weird lights and stuff. So these, oh, whoa. These actually look really cool. Okay, so let's get this paint out of here. These are like see-through dice. Yeah. In person, they look much more glowy, but yeah, it, it lights up because they're just transparent purple. And we got these glow-in-the-dark dice. Whoa, sweet. These really absorb, like instantly absorb the light. Yeah, they're like flashlight bright. I guess it's like having a continuous source of light on them. But see, if you use just a regular light, it uh, it just kind of looks like just white. But then when you turn the light off, then it glows. It's so like if we turn this off. Let's see here. Not knocking anything over. Where's the switch? Oh, so they dim almost immediately. Then you turn it on. It's like woo. Yeah, they look really cool. And these aren't glow in the dark at all. They just are see-through. So I guess any see-through dice would do that. Just light right up. But yeah, finding a real black light these days, it's kind of like finding a lava lamp. I mean, you got to know where to look. But it, it does give a cool effect, so if you're looking for like Halloween-y stuff to do, I guess that would be one way to do it. Yeah, they're still glowing. So we got our glowy art powder. Of course now, those glow sticks, 
where you crack it, you know, it breaks the little cylinder inside and it glows for like eight hours. I mean, those are always a fun thing for Halloween, but I was always looking for something, you know, longer term. You know, something you could paint on an action figure or something like that and be able to just light it up anytime. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get back to our game book reading. So, Jay, sir, now that you're here, um, we've got a couple of books we could read. What would you pick? We've got Wizards, Warriors, and You. And we could return to one of the other books that we've read before. So, Ghost Hunter, Choose Your Own Adventure. we got The Castle of No Return, R.G. Austin, Which Way Books. Horrors of the Haunted Museum, it's Twist of Plot. Midnight at Monster Mansion, one of my personal favorites, Twist of Plot. Vampire Spies and Alien Beings, which is also Which Way Books. And then we've got Empire Strikes Back. Used to find that Spencer's a Halloween store. Yeah, I'm thinking like party stores. Um, yeah, Spencer's Gifts. Um, uh, head shops. I mean, like anything that caters to like hippie, like marijuana culture or like ravers. And I mean, I'm not endorsing like the drug aspect of all that, not to get all political and everything, but um, if you can find cool stuff that you can use sober, <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, cool. Because uh, the magic is in the is in the technology itself. You don't need uh, other substances to make it make it happen. Yeah, Halloween stores have really cool stuff. I always enjoy enjoy it, especially when it actually works. It's not just like a gimmick that you take it home and it's just a complete disappointment. All right, so Jacer, do you have a preference on which book we read? Yeah, so we are live on Twitch here right now, and if you're watching this on YouTube or on the VOD, sorry, we're not live. But it's a good time. It was the first one. Okay, so Wizards, Warriors, and You. I've got two different books. There's the Siege of the Dragon Riders, and then there's the Challenge of the Wolf Knight. So that's the more fantasy roleplay type of book, where you play as the wizard or the warrior. We've got Ghost Hunter, Choose Your Own Adventure. Some like a paranormal investigator type story. You got the Castle of No Return, which apparently is about psychic powers. I didn't realize. I couldn't tell from the description. Very mysterious. Castle of No Return. Horrors of the Haunted Museum. Some of that we did on the rant cast. Some more horror themed. We got Midnight at Monster Mansion. Definitely horror themed. And then we've got Vampire Spies and Alien Beings, which is a combination of, of course, sci fi and horror, and a little bit of espionage, too. So are you thinking Ghost Hunter? Go ahead, Jacer. I'll let you pick. Because I've, I've read them all except for Wizards, Warriors, and you tonight. And Ghost Hunter. I just didn't read Ghost Hunter tonight. Castle of No Return. All right, let's go for it. I knew you were going to say that with my psychic powers that aren't working tonight. <laughs> all right. Castle No Return. I so far I like it. This is not one that I remember from my childhood, so no cheating. <laughs> Just the thrill of discovery. You know what I'm saying? Okay. We begin. One night, as you're watching your favorite television program, the picture begins to wiggle and a loud buzz fills the room. You try to adjust the set, but nothing works. In fact, the picture gets worse, and the buzz gets louder. Angry and frustrated, you turn off the TV. You talk to your friends and discover that every television set in town has been disrupted. See now, your modern equivalent would be like everybody's internet goes out. But back in the 80s, man, your television going out? That's, that's not right. The next morning, you hear strange electronic sounds. You discover that they're coming from the woods behind your house, and you decide to investigate them. You put your Swiss Army knife into your pocket and set out in the direction of the noise. You've been hiking for hours when the sky suddenly turns black and you're caught in a fierce storm. This music is just right. This is uh, um, White Bat Audio. 
courtesy of Carl Casey at White Bat Audio on YouTube. Royalty free. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. All right. Back to the story. Castle No Return. The storm. So suddenly you're caught in a fierce storm. The storm is short. But you're wet and shivering. And you come to a part of the woods that you've never seen before. In front of you is a castle. A real castle. With a moat and turrets and high walls. To the side of you is a rickety old shack. Decision time. Option one. Swim the moat in order to reach the castle. Option two. Explore the shack. So vote now. Or you can just tell me. Because it's just you, Jacer. Um, swim the moat or explore the shack. If you're not sure, um, option two. Okay, explore the shack. Thank you for that. By the way, if anybody wants to talk to me live, I am in Quest Talk in on the Hero Quest fans Discord, which you can see on your screen at the bottom there, the link to it. But if you prefer to type, that's fine too. Okay. You walk towards the shack. There's no light inside, but you hope that the door is unlocked so that you can go in and warm yourself. By now you're shivering shivering so violently that your whole body is shaking. You can barely control yourself enough to knock on the door. Just as you raise your hand, you hear the ferocious growl of a dog. Decision time. Option one, decide to knock on the door and enter the shack. Option two, decide you do not want to go in. So option one, knock and go in. Option two, don't go in. Alright, your choice. Option one, says Jaster. Okay, knock and go in. You knock. A light goes on and the door opens slowly. Hello, says a man. My name is Boris. Please come in from the cold. You glance at the huge mastiff that is chained to the wall. I don't know. You know what? I feel like giving him a different accent this time. My name is Boris. Please come in from the cold. You glance at the huge mastiff that's chained to the wall. Do not worry about Killer, says Boris. He will not do anything without my command. All right, you say in a shaky voice as you enter the shack. You look hungry, Boris says. Would you like a bowl of soup? Option one, eat the soup. Option two, don't eat the soup. <laughs> Decision time again. See, this is this is quick. Of course, this is the first of the Witch Way books, so soup or no soup? Option one, eat the soup. Okay. Soup is hot and tasty. And you finish it quickly. I was surprised, you say, to see a castle here in the woods. Nobody in town knows that it's here. It has always been the secret, Boris explains. We are involved in scientific research and do not want to be disturbed. What kind of research, you ask? Oh, powers of the mind, mostly, answers Boris. Uh, ESP, a hypnosis, psychokinesis, well, that sort of thing. Psycho what? You ask, not understanding the word. Psychokinesis, he repeats. The science of moving objects with the power of the mind. Observe. Boris picks up a spoon and places it on the palm of your hand. He then stares at the spoon. With an intense, powerful glare, you feel the spoon getting warm. Then it begins to twist. When Boris has finished, the spoon looks like a pretzel. I carry on my experiments in the control room, says Boris. Would you like to see it? Decision time again. Option one, go into the control room with Boris. Option two, do not go into the control room. See, they're giving you every opportunity <laughs> to get out of here. Similar to the... Uh, Vampire Spies and Alien Beans book. So, what do you think? Control room? Alright, control room it is. Alright. Boris looks at you and snaps his fingers. Let's be off, he says as he raises a trap door in the floor. This way, please. You follow him into a tunnel. As you walk, you hear the noise of animals scurrying around along the path in front of you. When you emerge from the tunnel, you realize that you're inside the castle. You follow Boris into a room that is filled with flashing lights. You're very frightened. You think that you should run from here as quickly as possible. That would not be wise, Boris says, reading your mind. Reading your mind. 
Okay, decision time again, Jacer. Option one, decide to make a run for it. Option two, decide to stay and find out what happens. Option one, run. Option two, stay. Option two, stay. All right. That was a wise decision, says Boris. He points to a chair in the middle of the room. Please, sit down. You sit in the chair. The flashing lights make your skin turn strange colors. Slowly, slowly, you feel yourself drifting away. The lights swirl around you. Soon you have the sensation that you're no longer yourself. Boris has incorporated you into his mind. Even though you know your chance of escaping is slim. Oh, let's see. It is an hour later. You're still in the room with Boris. You belong to him now, but you do not care. This is where I belong, you think, smile creeping over your face. This is what I should be doing. It is pleasant and warm in the castle with Boris. He is a nice man after all. I think I will like it here. The end. All right. Jay, sir, <laughs> you obviously weren't listening before because I was going through the choices and the same exact thing happened to me. I, I had to like bite my tongue, like not, not warning you, <laughs> not going to warn you. It's going to be the same thing. But hey, you got to have the experience. And now the people listening on this are like, no, don't do it. We just heard what happened. Another victim, Boris has claimed another victim. It's all about mind control. All right, Jay, sir, what do you think? I'm going to pick another one. Pick another story. Uh, let's see. We've got Ghost Hunter, Vampire Spies and Alien Beings, Midnight at Monster Mansion, Horrors of the Haunted Museum, and Wizards, Warriors, and You. Two choices there. Uh, Siege of the Dragon Riders and uh, Challenge of the Wolf Knight. Oh, and of course, Star Wars Empire Strikes Back. Choose your own adventure. We get time for one more. More adventure. Dragon Riders. All right. Not the Dragon Riders of Pern. That's the series that was popular in my day. I, I didn't read it, but it was always advertised. Like every science magazine had it. I'm not sure what it's thought of these days, but back then it was like all over the place. Okay. Siege of the Dragon Riders. Wizards, Warriors, and You. Book two. We're still doing the Halloween theme, so I'm not going to change it. All right, so this is a role-playing book. Past the Pale Stone Castle, where King Henry rules. Past the Green Courtyard, where Henry's knights train. And meet in the competition for the joust. Past the meadows, where the king's cows graze. Past the vineyards, where the king's wine is pressed. Past the marketplace. Past the village inns. Past the farms. Several hundred yards beyond the low brick wall that forms the very boundary of the royal domain. Stands a large, flat rock. This large flat rock is bounded by a steep jagged cliff on one side and the rolling purple ocean on the other. It is on this flat rock that the wizard and the warrior meet to remember adventures of the past and to talk of adventures yet to come. They have much to talk about. Together, this team of legend, this master of magical forces, and this champion of the lightning sword have defeated evil in the world and in worlds beyond. They have triumphed over untold foes in castles and courtyards and in the mountains and forests that surround the medieval world. The challenge of this world are many. The challenges of this world are many. For there are always those, human and non-human, who would destroy the wizard and the warrior and the world they protect. In this book, you will enter the unpredictable world of the wizard and the warrior. You will enter their world, and you will become part of it. If you make the right decisions, the wizard and the warrior will succeed in their quest, and their legend will live on. If you make the wrong choices, their bright legend will dim. You will find yourself trapped in the world of unimaginable horror. The journey begins in the world of wizards, warriors, and you. Let it be known that the amazing tale of all that came to pass for the wizard and the warrior in their battle against the dragon riders is true. The adventure began on a cold autumn day in the tenth year of the reign of King Henry in the meadow outside the walls of Silver Silvergate, his castle. 
The wind blew cool across the tall grass of the meadow as the wizard and the warrior stepped forward to join the rest of King Henry's subjects. It was the day before the harvest, a day of solemn prayers followed by celebration. As the chanting of the priest floated on the wind, a cloud spread its darkness over the sun, and a chill covered the crowded meadow. A rain today would surely slow the harvest, the wizard said quietly to his companion, his eyes surveying the sky. But we have much to be thankful for, the wizard answered. Uh, the warrior answered, excuse me. He answered the wizard. Ignoring the cold wind that blew against his ceremonial armor, the crops are plentiful this year. No one will go hungry. The wizard looked toward large barrels of wine carried to the meadow for the day-long celebration that would follow the priest's blessing. And I believe that no one will go thirsty either, he said, a smile crossing his usually serious face. The priest finished his melodious prayers and stepped back. King Henry stepped forward to speak his official pronouncement of the harvest. He raised his hands as greeting to his subjects, but he couldn't get to say a wo he didn't get to say a word. The dark clouds suddenly turned darker, and the wind picked up. The clouds seemed to swirl about, gray upon gray, black upon gray, twisting, undulating faster and faster. All eyes were on the sky now. What storm was this that threatened to interrupt the celebration? Look! Someone rides atop the clouds! The farmer yelled, his arms tightening around the shoulder of his frightened wife. Figures appeared in the swirling, twisting clouds, giant figures that resembled men, then monsters, then men astride monsters. What monsters are these? The warrior cried, reaching for the sword of the golden lion, which was always at his side. Closer the giant figures loomed, shadows against the shadowy clouds. The sky rumbled. The rumble became a roar, it shook the meadowland. Dragons! Several terrified people screamed at once. The sky above the kingdom was darkened now, not by clouds, but by an army of gigantic winged dragons. And in each flying beast rode a warrior in black armor, carrying a spear of black. Warriors who ride atop dragons? The wizard cried. Is this magic? Has some evil sorcerer bewitched my eyes? His answer, his question was answered quickly. The dragons and their fierce riders were all too real. The dragons landed in the farmland that stretched beyond the meadow and roared a menacing greeting. As King Henry and his subjects watched in horror and fright, the giant beasts trampled the ripe crops. Urged on by the warriors who rode them as if they were horses, they smashed and burned the wheat, barley, and the vegetables that had been grown with such care. All were flattened beneath their deliberate footsteps and then turned to ash by their fiery breath. The king's warriors stood frozen in amazement as this army of monsters and men destroyed all the crops of the Northlands. We shall return, a warrior's voice called from atop a heaving, hissing dragon. This kingdom and all kingdoms shall be ours. Dragon riders turned their beasts, 200 beasts at least, treading once again over the crops that had already been destroyed, slowly, arrogantly keeping to the ground, daring the king's men to follow. They rode off toward the forests beyond the farmlands. King Henry's grief-stricken subjects returned in silence to their homes, thinking of the long, hungry winter that was soon to face. The meadow stood empty, the wine barrels lying alone, unattended under the dark sky. Soon after, the wizard and the warrior were summoned to the king's chamber. Men who can tame winged dragons and ride them to battle? King exclaimed, sadly shaking his head. I have never seen or heard such a thing in all my journeys. If the dragons can be tamed by men, they can be tamed by us, the warrior said firmly. Once the dragons have been defeated, once the drag, what? Oh, you gotta remember who's speaking here. Okay, sorry. Once the dragons have been defeated, the dragon riders can be beaten as well, the wizard nodded agreement. I must rely on you, the king said. If the crops of the Southlands are also destroyed, none of us shall survive the winter. We must follow these dragon riders. We must learn their secrets. And in learning their secrets, discover a way to destroy them. This must be done before they can attack again. Excellency, says the warrior, we shall not fail you. Thus, our tale begins. The story now becomes your story. The mission becomes your mission. The time has come for you to choose the role you wish to play. Will you take the part of the wizard or the warrior? Make your choice. Alright. Option one, wizard. Option two, warrior. 
It's like, Jacer, it's all you. So what, what, what do you think? Option two, so we got the warrior. Yeah, so far nobody's picked the wizard, but we'll go with the warrior. You are the warrior. You have wisdom as well as might, so you realize that your boasts to the king were mere words. To defeat a huge army of winged dragons and the warriors they have tamed, who have tamed them will require more than words. It will require all of your skills as the warrior. The back of the book you will find a book describing all the weapons you possess. Turn now to the book of weapons. You may take only three of these weapons along with you, in addition to the sword of the golden lion, which is always with you. Choose carefully, decide which three weapons you will take. Alright, so for each of the weapons, I'll go ahead and name the weapons. If you want me to read the description of the weapon for more detail, I can do that. Uh, then you'll get to begin your hunt for the evil dragon riders. So you've got the Sword of the Golden Lion automatically, and then you get three more weapons to take with you. The Book of Weapons. As the warrior, you may use all the weapons listed here, but remember, a great warrior uses wisdom as well as might. Okay, so weapon number one, this is what you get. The Sword of the Golden Lion, an immortal sword that cannot be broken. The Sword of the Golden Lion was forged by the same swordsmith who forged the legendary Excalibur. The scabbard carries the inscription forever, and the lion is etched in gold on the blade itself. You won the sword after a battle to the death against the Lancashire Sorcerer, and it has been at your side ever since. You carry the sword of the golden lion at all times. In addition, you may choose from the following list three other weapons to accompany you. So, uh, we've got a lot of different options, so why don't you just type out your response for what you want. So, these are the options. Battle axe, triple crossbow, Lance, Morning Star, Longbow with Poison Tipped Arrows, Flail, Double Pointed Mace, and Devil's Dagger. If you need more description of those, just uh, ask. Go ahead and ask in the chat. Once again, they were Battle Axe, Triple Crossbow, Lance, Morning Star. Longbow with poison tipped arrows, flail, double pointed mace, and devil's dagger. Yeah, because I didn't put option one through nine, so you can just go ahead and type it out. Type go ahead, type out the ones you're interested in, and I can give you more info on those. If you'd like there, Jacer. Okay, you want the lance. And when you say bow, do you mean the crossbow or the longbow? With the poison tipped arrows. I'll read each of these two. Okay, the lance. The eight foot lance is an excellent weapon for battles on horseback. It is usually the weapon knights turn to when their sword has failed them. The major drawback to the lance is the fact that it can be broken. Okay. Okay, so you want the lance, the flail, and the longbow. Let me read the flail to you. Used for whipping or choking, this is l largely a weapon for desperate situations. It consists of a short wooden handle attached to a long cord. To a by a long, sorry, it consists of a short wooden stick attached by a long cord to a long wooden handle. Major, major benefit of this weapon is that it can be, it is light and can, is easier to carry than most other weapons. So that's the flail. Lance flail and the longbow with poison tipped arrows. A simple weapon, except that the poison tips were prepared especially by the wizard. Their potency never weakens, no matter how many victims the arrows claim. Okay, good. Alright, I'll keep those in mind. Thank you, Jacer. So you are fully equipped and ready to go. You do not sleep well the night before you and the wizard are to begin your mission pace the floor of your chamber, your mind unable to cast away the picture of the dragon riders and their cruel attack. Morning finally arrives, damp and cold. You and the wizard mount your horses in silence. The harvest of the Southlands has begun. As you and your companion ride by the fields, farmers drop their scythes to, ga to greet you and wish you well. Their words of hope are a sharp contrast to their frightened faces. When you reach the gate that leads out of the kingdom, the wizard finally breaks the silence. 
I will never forget the sight of those monstrous creatures dropping down onto our land from the skies, he says sadly. It is possible that that is only the beginning of the horrors we will witness, you say grimly. Your horse edges back towards the gate, reluctant to leave the safety of the kingdom. You realize that you must now come up with a strategy. At least the trail will not be hard to follow, the wizard says, pointing to the wide path of the structure. The the wide path of the destruction, the deep ruts in the earth, singed grasslands left by the departing dragons. I'm not so certain we wish to follow the path that they have made, you say thoughtfully. But we have no other path to follow, the wizard says, no other guide. There is one other, you say. There is Jabara. The wizard pulls his horse up short and turns to you with a wild look in his eyes. Has a sight of those dragon riders dislodged your mind? Why would anyone seek out Jabara, who has no cause to? Jabara is a dragon like those who attacked us. An aged dragon, but still deadly. This path may end before leading us to the dragon rider's kingdom, you argue. It is likely that the dragons took to the sky. They will have left no path for us to follow in the sky. But to seek out Jabara in his cave is to... Jabara is the only creature who can tell us from where the dragons and their masters come, you interrupt. Jabara deals with the world of evil. Jabara is evil, the wizard cries, and his evil is old enough to challenge my magic with success. But Jabara is old and tired, you insist. He will not wish to rouse himself to challenge my sword. It is an unnecessary risk to take, the wizard says. I beg you to follow this path. Surely it would lead us to our enemy. You must decide. Do you wish to pay a visit to Jabara, the ancient dragon, or to follow the trail the dragon riders have left? Decision time. Option one. Choose to face Jabara. Option two. Follow the trail. So option one. Jabara, the old dragon. Option two. Follow the trail. What do you think, Chaser? Option two. Follow the trail. Okay. The trail of destruction leads into the forest. The ground is rutted with holes, many of them six feet deep. The holes filled with flattened shrubs, parts of trees have been knocked down, and the burned corpses of animals who cannot get away from the giant dragons at time. All right, we're getting a little bit of an ad here. Well, I guess I'll just use this time to show you my cool glow-in-the-dark lights again. <laughs> my glue, gl cool glow-in-the-dark paints. Ooh, pretty. Yeah. Definitely have to come up with some plans for these. Again, I'm thinking some type of uh, hidden writing on a poster. Like a, an ancient map. That'd be really fun to do. So... Yeah, for those of you joining us later, we are reading Wizards, Warriors, and You, Book 2, The Siege of the Dragon Riders, if you're in HeroQuest fans. Yeah, we're just waiting for the ad to be done here. Look at some other cool, glowy stuff. Yeah, it's just amazing how bright, like how instantly bright they are. So I guess if you've got a real black light, this is what you can do. And like he said, uh, if you paint your miniatures, you can... Uh, give them kind of that rave look to them all right we are back thanks everybody yeah you know a strange bus uh, is facing the same thing all of the people out there Darkhawk and everybody who's part of twitch now i mean they're really pushing ads hard on us they're trying to get more they're making it easier to make money off of twitch but they're also really pushing that hard and of course they get a bigger cut than we do but i just do this for fun i just do it for a hobby so yeah, I guess I'm I'm contributing to the the evil empire of Amazon. Uh, I was gonna mention something about Lord of the Rings, but Rings of Power, but I haven't seen it, so I can't really say. But maybe on the next rank cast, not this week, but next week. All right, the trail of destruction leads into the forest. The ground is rutted with many holes. Okay, we already read that. Corpses of animals that were burned to death. Uh, then suddenly the trail ends. This must be magic of some sort, he tell the wizard. There's no evidence in the trees that the dragons took flight at this spot. 
Perhaps the dragon riders have called on their own wizards to cast a spell of invisibility over the trail, the wizard says. I will try to cast a spell to combat their magic. You wait for the wizard to pull his cape around him, as he always does to begin spellcasting, but he does not move. Are you having trouble with the spell, you ask? Spell, he says, staring at you. Would you like me to cast a spell? What sort of spell? You stare back at him. You don't remember what sort of spell. And, and you're staring at the strange person in strange clothing. You realize you do not remember who he is. Uh-oh. Can you help me find my way, stranger? He asks. I am a wayfarer here myself, you answer. I, I do not know the way. Can you tell me where we are? I do not remember traveling this way, the stranger replies. I cannot tell you from where I came, nor can I recall where I'm headed. You stare at each other, disoriented, frightened. A feeling of dizziness comes over you. Powerful magic has been used to empty your minds. The trail you wish to follow ends here in the forest. It will never lead you to the dragon riders you wish to defeat. To accomplish that mission, you will have to face the ancient Jabara, and to do that, you will have to close the book and begin again. All right, Jacer. Sorry, man, that was the end of the line. Now, normally I'd make you start all over with a new book, but I feel like that was kind of a <laughs> bum deal. So what do you think? Um, I'll let you go back and choose Jabara, or if you want to choose the wizard instead of the warrior, get a whole new set of choices, it's up to you. So what would you say? You can go ahead and type your response there in the chat. So should we go back to the Jabara choice, or should we start completely over as a different character? I mean, I feel like you didn't get much of an adventure. We kind of got stopped right at the start. I'm thinking you probably want to <laughs> take him to Jabba the Hutt. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, ah, ah. All right, here we are. Jabara, the ancient dragon, has not left his cave in more than a hundred years. The wise old creature lives in a hill of dark caves, connected by even darker tunnels. A labyrinth of safety, for few have dared to enter these caves. Even fewer have come out again. You are willing to risk a confrontation with the dragon because you are certain that Jabara will be able to guide you to the Dragon Riders. But to confront Jabara, you must first find him. As you search the hill of Jabara's labyrinth, you see that there are four caves. Four caves. You must guess which cave will lead you to Jabara. At the entrance of cave number one, you see what appears to be a large serpent acting as a guard. Cave number two appears to be empty, but of course, you cannot know if it is truly empty without entering. Cave number three also appears to be empty. Cave number four seems to have some sort of white covering draped over the entrance way. Is this because Jabara is inside? Which cave do you choose to enter? All right, so decision time. We've got four caves. Cave one, that's the one with the serpent. Cave two, empty, appears empty. Cave 3 appears empty. Cave 4, white covering. Oh. Jacer, was that your choice? You chose cave number 2 already? Confirm? Cave 2? I wasn't watching the chat when I saw that. Cave 2. Okay. Alright, here we go. Cave number 2. And if you've played this before, you can maybe remember that we haven't chosen all four before, so we don't know. Okay. You and the wizard enter the second cave slowly, pausing just inside the entrance to allow your eyes to adjust to the dim light. I was thinking of HeroQuest, <laughs> just so you can search for traps. Um, at first, you see nothing in this dark chamber. And you begin to make out shapes of things, a pile of dried bones in the center of the floor, a dozen of fanged bats hanging upside down from the ceiling. What is that large object on the far wall? The wizard asks, his voice echoing off the stone walls of the cave. You both stare and both realize at the same time that the massive, unmoving object against the wall is none other than Jabara! Jabara, we have found you! You cry out loudly, attempting to show the ancient dragon that you have no fear. 
The dragon does not move. Its wrinkled tail is wrapped tightly around its sagging yellow body. Cracked, wart-covered eye eyelids cover its eyes. Jabara! You yell again. Jabara, we have come to talk to you! One eye opens. The creature is alive. The creature hears you. Both eyes open wide. The head swings around slowly on its long, withered neck. Your nostrils, nostrils fill with the stench of decay. Jabara opens its dry, cracked lips and struggles to speak, but nothing comes out of its mouth but air. Warrior, the dragon finally manages to say in a voice that whistles like the wind through a windless crack. Warrior, he repeats. Have you brought this wizard for my dinner? The wizard takes a step back and looks at you in horror. With what teeth could you chew such a morsel? You ask boldly. I would not need to chew a meal so small. <laughs> Jabara wheezes, starts to laugh at his joke, but the laughter turns to violent coughing. Go away, warrior. Let an old dragon sleep. Jabara says finally, turning his head away from you. Sleep when I am gone, you say, raising your sword. I need an information from you now. The dragon turns to face you once more. Do you threaten me with that sword? Will you give me cause to use it, you ask, summoning all your courage before the still mighty creature? You will not leave this cave alive, Dragon says, starting to pull his massive body up to stand up and face you from his full and awesome height. Can you talk your way out of this one? Or will you have to fight the old dragon? Let's find out. I wish only to speak with you, you call up to Jabara. You must tell us how to find the dragons and the dragon riders who wish to destroy our kingdom. The dragon now towers above you, its old head swaying up and down on its long yellowed neck, its decayed teeth cracking and crumbling in its snarling mouth. I do not wish it, Jabara says, forcing the words out one at a time. I do not wish it. But I am old and not in the mood to argue. I will tell you what you wish to know. I am grateful, you start to say. After you entertain me, he calls out a signal. You hear loud scratching sounds. You turn to see two gigantic spiders coming scampering into the cave. E -he -he. The old dragon starts to laugh, breaks into another round of hideous coughing. Spider dragons, you cry, realizing that these giant spiders have the heads of dragons and the deadly teeth as well. It will take only three bites from my spider dragons, Jabara says, his eyes coming to life for the first time. And your body will dissolve, then I will drink you up. And for dessert, I'll have your wizard companion over there. He he he. The spider dragon's legs scrape and scratch across the cave floor as they race towards you. You raise the sword of the golden lion and begin to swing it in wide circles. You must kill both spider dragons. Then perhaps Jabara will speak to you. And you and the wizard can flee this cave of horror. Can you defeat the spider dragons? Okay, so what they say is flip a coin. And every time it comes up heads, you've killed the spider dragon. Every time it comes up tails, you've been bitten. If you survive, you must get two heads before you get three tails. And you get two tails. Da, da, da. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say we're just going to roll dice here. So we've got dice, six-sided dice. And we're going to say uh, even number is heads, odd number is tails. Is that fair? So we got to get two heads before we get three tails. All right, so we're just gonna roll our dice here. All right. All right, that's a six, that's a head. So we've killed a spider dragon. 
All right, let's go again. Try not to break it. Oh, that's that's a uh, positive. That's a uh, number as well, even number. So we got two. So that's another kill. Okay, so we've killed them both. Spider dragons are dead. Woo. Okay. If you manage to get two heads and kill both spiders before you're bitten three times, turn to 28. Yep. Yeah, I just kind of had to convert it. I mean, back in the day, I would have flipped a coin, but now if I had a glow in the dark coin, how cool would that be? Maybe maybe next time. We'll figure that out. I guess I could paint, like, glow in the dark paint on a, an actual coin. A shudder runs down the ancient dragon's body. Is that right? Jabbar closes his eyes and shakes his head slowly. He stands still now, as still as death. I have entertained you, Jabara. Have I not? Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? I have entertained you, and I have killed your soldiers here, you shout, pointing at the corpses of the spider dragons silence from the old dragon now you must give me the information I request you cry pointing the sword of the drug dra dragon the sword of the golden lion at the giant dragon silence Jabara appears to be in a trance or is it just sleep a fit of violent coughing arouses the dragon one eye opens then the other its face contorts into a hideous frown you have invaded my home and committed murder the raspy voice of Jabara cries out. I entered your home and was attacked, you argue, standing your ground. I will not stay here any longer than I need to. Keep your bargain, old one. Keep your bargain and tell my companion and, and me where we might find the foes we seek. Jabara coughs, slowly nods his agreement. I live in two worlds, he tells you quietly. Your world and the world of twilight evil. I will tell you two tales. One contains the information you seek. One is a tale not of your time or place. I cannot tell you which tale to believe. That you must decide for yourself. Tell us your tales, Jabara, you insist impatiently. Alright, we'll listen to Jabara's two tales. Here are the tales Jabara tells. One of them tells the truth. It will lead you and the wizard to the dragon riders you seek. The other is full of lies and will lead you far from your destination. All right, listen carefully. The first tale. The first tale in the hills of Welknor, where the red rains fall. The powerful dragons must heed the call of a magical flute that only they hear. The music your kingdom will soon, soon learn to fear. Okay, the second tale. The second tale! High in a mountain stands the castle of Kral, defended and hidden by a thousand foot wall. Inside a force of ten thousand men, prepare the dragons to attack once again. You must decide which tale to believe. Option one, decision time. Option one, travel to the hill of Welknor. Option two, travel to the castle of Kral. All right, option one, hill of Welknor, so that's the first tale. Option two, castle of Kral, it's the second tale. What do you think? Vote now. Welcome, Nina Tella. We're playing uh, Wizards, Warriors, and You, one of these awesome game books, The Siege of the Dragon Riders from back in the day. Okay, Jacer says option one. This is from 1984, Parachute Press. All right, uh, newcomer, do you have a, a vote? Or do you agree with Jacer? He says option one, that that's the tale we should believe of the dragon. It is a dragon we're talking about, but we've only got two choices. Alright. Quest for the magic flute. 
Okay, I hear ya. So, if there's no objections, I think we're just gonna go with option one. Travel to the hills of Welknor. The journey to Welknor is long and hard. Your weary horses make their way through tangled forests without paths. And over a rock-strewn plain that cuts their hooves and bruises their legs. The journey ends in another forest. Jabara's tale told of hills, but this land is flat, the wizard says to you. What is that hill up ahead, you cry, seeing something strange in a small clearing. Your horses carry you close enough to see what it is. It is a hill, all right. A hill of bones, you cry. Perhaps it is some sort of burial hill, the wizard suggests, climbing down from his horse to take a closer look. No, it is our dining room, shouts a thunderous voice in the trees beyond the clearing. Welcome, dinner. An orange dragon rumbles out from behind a tree. A hideous grin across his drooling mouth. Another dragon steps out, another follows, and then another. Soon you realize you are seeing not four dragons, but one. They are all attached at the tail. The dragon of four bodies, you cry, recognizing this legendary beast. The dragon uses its four bodies to form a wall around you and the wizard. Jibara has sent me a tasty lunch this time, the dragon says, his drool running down all four of its hungry mouths. You are surrounded by the flesh of the dragon's four bodies. Four hungry heads close in on you. I will attempt to spell, the wizard cries, pulling his robes around him. I will shrink the dragon down until it is the size of a dog. Then we can make our escape. He begins to chant the words of the ancient spell. Will it work? Let's find out. The wizard calls out the words of the ancient spell. He pulls back his robes and nothing. The spell has not worked. Your adversary is still huge. Four, dragons he four dragon heads laugh uproariously. I was created by a wizard, all four heads say at once. No wizard spells can work on me. You realize it is time to fight. You draw the sword of the golden lion. One huge dragon head swoops down and grabs it from your hand. You must try your luck with another of the weapons you've chosen to carry on your quest. Okay, so let's see. Lance. Okay, so that's one of them. Okay, if you brought the lance, you have only a 1 in 4 chance of victory. But even with such poor odds, you must fight. Okay, what else did you bring? The longbow with poison-tipped arrows. You have a slightly better chance of victory. So, okay, so which should, we, which should we try? Should we try the lance with the slight chance of victory or the longbow with a slightly better chance of victory? I mean, I'm thinking you probably want the better chance. Yep, I thought so. Let's go with the longbow. Thanks, Jacer. The dragon heads move in for their dinner. You reach for one of your bows. You have only a few seconds left to kill all four bodies. Perhaps your skill as an archer and a little luck will lead you to victory against this foe. Okay, using the longbow with poison-tipped arrows, you have only a 50% chance of victory. Pick a number from between 1 and 10. Okay, um... Go ahead. Pick a number between a whole number between one and ten. Go for it, Jacer. Just go ahead and type your answer. Four. Okay. Your luck has run out. The hungry beast has ignored your arrows and is about to enjoy a tasty dinner of wizard and warrior. Close the book quickly before you are forced to read a more colorful description of what is about to happen to you. Darn. I don't think we've ever gotten farther than that. Okay, well, sorry. The adventure ends here. I know. Well, Jacer, it's been fun. It's been a blast. Um, thanks for joining us. If it wasn't so late already, I'd say, hey, let's try a few more rounds of this. But you can always go on eBay or wherever 
Uh, good books are found, and look for Wizards, Warriors, and You. Book two, Siege of the Dragon Riders. I want to say I read a few of these back in the day as a kid, and I enjoyed every single one of them. I can't remember if The Forest of Twisted Dreams was the one that I read first. Yeah, I would have thought too. Yeah, you cut the tail. Do all of them die, or just... Uh, do you just have now four dragons to fight? I think the book that I had, I actually owned it, and I don't know where it is. I'm going to have to like search high and low in my parents' house for it. It was called The Haunted Castle Raven Curse. That was book five. There's at least eight of these books. So The Forest of Twisted Dreams, Siege of the Dragon Riders, Who Kidnapped Princess Sarah Linda, Ghost Knights of Camelot, Haunted Castle Raven Curse, Revenge of the Falcon Knight, Challenge of the Wolf Knight, which I also have, Conquest of the Time Master. These are a little more expensive than some of your other books out there, game books. Not as expensive as Space Ace. Those, not Space Ace. I keep wanting to call it Space Ace. Star Challenge. Space Ace is the Don Bluth cartoon sequel to, uh, spiritual sequel to Dragon, uh, Dragon's Lair. No, this is called, uh, it's not Space Ace, it's Star Challenge. Star Challenge, those books are awesome, but they're really hard to find. I don't know, would I rather a D10? Oh, well, Jacer, you know, that's a fair proposition. Um, I guess I'm the de facto GM for this. So, you know what? You want to try that? We can try that. We could give it another shot. Let me just see. I should have a D10 here. Now, I can't see it as well in the dark because it's not phosphorescent. But let's see. That's a D8. I was uh, teasing my friend on his huge bag, his pound of dice. But then I was realizing, you know, if you're hosting a game of Dungeons and Dragons, you've probably got eight people showing up. You're going to have a full set of dice for each person. So, kind of makes sense. And then you've got a few alternates in case people don't like the colors or whatever. you got some wonky dice. Okay, so that's a D10. But that's the one that's got like 0 through 90 on it. Let's get the other one. I'm not as familiar with these type of dice, but I got my own set. Let's see. Five. Okay, yeah. So there's a D10 right there. And you can't really see it very well. But you'll just have to trust me when I roll it. Okay, so that'll be a random number generator. So we were fighting the, the dragon with four bodies. The beast with four bodies. Let's get to that spot again. In the video game world, this would be the save and reload. If you were playing a console game, you had to use like code or game genie or something. Oh, there's a lot of dragons in this. A lot of different dragons. Come on, where were we? What was that page? I deliberately didn't say page numbers on the stream because I didn't want to confuse anybody. Okay, here we are. Four. So he tries to spell, it fails. With slight chance. So yeah, the, the, the battles are random chance. But you gotta have the right weapon. If you have the wrong weapon, it just doesn't work at all. Okay. Alright, here we are. Okay, so we're gonna roll our uh, d10. See what we get. Don't be a four. <laughs> Don't be a fool, Marshal. Alright, let's roll and... What is that? I have to look at it. It's a seven. Oh, a seven is death, too. Your luck has run out. The hungry beast has ignored your arrows. About to enjoy a tasty dinner, wizard and warrior. Yeah, it's only 50% chance. I'm surprised they didn't just say flip a coin. If it's heads, this, if it's tails, that. I say just keep you guessing. Now, you could go back and see what the other weapon is. the slight chance of success. What do you think, Jacer? I mean, we could just, like in the old days as a kid, you get frustrated and you're just like, yeah, yeah, I won. But, I don't know, I just like to, I like to keep it suspenseful and see what happens. 
Let's see here. I'm just finding the page again because I didn't have my finger there. Okay. I'm going to try the lance. It's a slight chance. I mean, I've read some some books where they, they just have really weird stuff. They'll say, like, if you're reading this book on a Tuesday, <laughs> you know, it's like, what? <laughs> so, <laughs> just get you to come back. Okay. Um, the four heads swoop down, qu swoop down quickly, ready to enjoy their dinner. The wizard drops back, still horrified that his spell has not worked against this hideous dragon. You prepare to use your lance against this large and menacing foe. You know your chances are not very good, but you must kill all four bodies before one of them eats you. Toss a coin four times. If it comes up heads only once in the four tosses, you can defeat the dragon. If, you're, if your coin comes up heads more than once in four tosses, none of the dragons or none of the weapons have saved you. Oh man. So we got to, okay, I'm thinking a coin. So what do you think? I was going to roll a d6 and treat heads as like um, even numbers as heads, odd numbers as tails. What do you think? So you got to get an even number only once. We gotta do it four times. Roll them. All right, let's do it. Okay, so we got our big glowy D6 here. Give it a good roll. Oh, that was a six, and I smashed right into it. So, what are dead? Three skulls. Well. You know, if you'd rather, if you uh, are more comfortable with the uh, Hero Quest dice, we could always try that. Let's see, do I have Hero Quest dice here? Should. I don't think these phosphorus. Oh yes, haha! -ha. <laughs> Look at that, the uh, the icy uh, frozen horror dice. They kind of light up. All right. So three skulls. Well, no, wait a minute. If we Are we treating the skulls as tails or the skulls as heads? Oh, we got ads. Yeah. Yep, we're, uh, we're at the tail end here of our game book reading for today. We've gone over a little bit. We went an hour over because we didn't get started until, what, half an hour in? So, but yeah, I've had a good time. I've had fun. So we're just enjoying an ad. We're also listening to Carl Casey's uh, White Bat Audio. We got these goofy ads. Paying the bills. Yeah, so today we've got Jacer J joining us and Nina Tella. Let me just check my bot list. Sorry to always have to do this, but unfortunately there's so many bots out there. Oh, Nina Tella might be real. Hey. Always a pleasure to have a real person join. No, Nina Tella's a bot. Ha! <laughs> Should have known. All right, let me just ban this bot here. Banned and blocked. And just to be thorough, I'm gonna report. Ban, block, and report. That's how we handle bots here. Until our bot overlords take over, in which case, haha, <laughs> skin guys. All right, we are back. So, Jacer, um, 
we have to avoid rolling a skull because it's saying or no wait a minute so it's saying you have to get heads once out of four rolls do we treat a skull as heads or not and then shields as tails so what do you think you tell me what it should be it's going to be a 50 percent chance basically we have to get one head out of four rolls and then we win if we get more than one head, then we've lost. I don't know. I'm thinking skulls should be heads, and then shield should be tails. It's just standard three skulls and one shield. So you're saying the skulls would represent the uh, tails, and the shield would be the... I could see that. That would make sense. Because there's three skulls on there and then three shields. So, okay. So, we, we have to roll three skulls and one shield to win. All right. As you wish. Let's do it. Okay. That's a shield. If we roll any more shields, we've lost. That's another white shield. Okay. So, we lost. Kill and block to, le to live. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, sorry, man. It's really tough. <laughs> well, and your date. We've died three times. So in video game land, that means you're uh, you're done. <laughs> you gotta ask mom for more quarters, I guess. Uh, go home. Be a family man. Well, I've had fun. I've enjoyed it. Um, yeah, Wizards, Warriors, and you can be a little challenging. Um, they definitely. Uh, don't pull any punches when it comes to the combat. So I guess uh, I guess we're done for the day. Um, thank you for joining us on HeroQuest Fan. So we had some fun. We read, uh, if you want to rewind and watch the VOD, the video on demand, we've got the Castle of No Return. A couple passes through that. Horrors of the Haunted Museum. We did Midnight at Monster Mansion. Vampire Spies and Alien Beings. And of course, Wizards, Warriors, and You, Siege of the Dragon Riders. And we've got, I've got a whole... A whole shelf of these books uh, to read and I really enjoy it I know that they're kids books from the 80s but they got a special place in my heart they're always fun simple uh, entertainment in these trying times it's good to have fun take a little break and there's like glowy like lint on the table <laughs> so anyway I'll give everybody a rest uh, good game Thanks, Jacer, for joining us. And tomorrow, the plan, if all goes well, the plan will be to play HeroQuest tomorrow. Unless something comes up. Originally, I think my plans were going to be, I was going to be busy today and yesterday. But it turned out it was only yesterday. So, I could still uh, do the game unless something comes up. But the plan will be 6 to 10. Central Standard Time here on Twitch.tv slash HeroQuest fans. Uh, thanks for joining us. And if you're watching this on the replay on YouTube, thanks for checking us out. We've grown by leaps and bounds. Still not as fast as some other popular channels, but having a good time. So, all right. Everybody have a great night. And if I don't catch you before Halloween, have a safe, fun Halloween or beggar's night or whatever you call it where you are. Um, be sure to check all your candy. So if you're a dad, you get to, you get to be the king's food taster. <laughs> All right, everybody have a great one. Uh, thanks for joining us here on HeroQuest fans, and next time we'll do some HeroQuest. All right, bye for now.